Right, uh, 2020, paper one, question seven. So, looks from the outset that this is sequences and series. But you can do a lot of these questions without knowing anything about sequences and series. It's taking your time, um, footering about, being good at algebra. So, in this one here, so a number of the form one plus two plus three is called the triangular number because it can be represented as an equilateral triangle. The diagram below shows the first three terms of the sequence. So you've got one, and you add on two more, and you add on three more. The next one you're going to add on four. So like this here, you add on two, and you add on three, and you're going to add on four, so you're up at ten. And you're going to add on five, fifteen, you're going to add on six, twenty-one, and you're going to add on seven, twenty-eight, and then you're going to add on eight, which is thirty-six. And that's not a linear sequence, it's not the same first difference, it's actually a quadratic sequence, same second difference of one. It's a quadratic uh, pattern or sequence. So part two here, the nth triangular number can be formed found directly using this formula. Um, so like if I sub in two for n, that should give me three. Two times two plus one over two. Uh, 2 times 3 over 2, 6 over 3, which, or 6 over 2, which is 3. So if we, the second term has 3 numbers. So if we sub in 3, we should get 6. 4, we should get 10. Is 1, 2, 7, 5 a triangular number? Now look what the triangular number is. That's the answer. So you say, so you're 3 in this case. Um, so 1, 2, 7, 5, a triangular number. So what you've got to do is fill in your 1, 2, 7, 5 for your TN. And then work out, do we get n to be a whole number? So 1, 2, 7, 5. And for me, tn is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. Cross multiply. 1, 2, 7, 5 by 2. 2, 5, 5, 0. And I'm just going to multiply out that top line as well. n squared plus n. Starting to look like your old friend the quadratic. Tidy up a wee bit, n squared plus n minus 2550. I would just do your minus b formula there. Um, so a is 1, b is 1, c is minus At 50. So, what are your answers? Which looks good. I can't imagine this other one being great. Um, minus 51. So, you're going to take n is equal to 50. So, that means if you filled in 50 for your n, you get 1, 2, 7, 5. So, the 50th term in that sequence gives you 1, 2, 7, 5. So, is it a triangular number? Yes. As t50 is equal to 1, 2, 7, 5. So, again, Nothing that you would have learnt of in your patterns and sequences chapter. The next bit here is the n plus 1 triangular number can be written as that. Write the expression this as a single fraction. So you just have to write this as one fraction. Simple. That's algebra. So put it over the same common denominator. Fraction can't disappear because there's no equal sign. So n plus n or n times n plus 1 over 2 plus 2 times n plus 1 over 2. So you know that's all over 1. I'm just multiplying that side by 2. Get it over the same common denominator. You could multiply this out if you like. You'll get n squared plus n plus 2n plus 2. Tidy it up, get your quadratic and then factorize it. Or someone might see there they've shared a common factor of your n plus 1. And this is what's left. Just what you do when you do grouping, you know, your four terms over two. But let's say you could multiply that out, get a quadratic, get your n squared plus 3n plus 2, tidy it up. We'll go back to this. So there it's written as a single fraction. Next bit. Prove that the sum of any two consecutive triangular numbers 
will always be a square number. Um, the sum of any two consecutive. All right, so we're using our previous answers. If you're in doubt, look at what you did. Why did they make me do this? So, in the first bit of it, the nth triangular number can be found using this. N times n plus 1 over 2. Let's write that one down. The next term, the n plus 1. So if this is the fourth, this is the fifth, it's just the next one on. Can be written as the following. Plus n plus 1, n plus 2, over 2. Or you can use this, but there's a reason why they wanted you to write it as a single fraction. If in doubt, use your previous answer. Sum of two consecutive there after each other. There's my nth term. There's my n plus 1 the term. Will always be a square number. So we're going to tidy this up. And we're going to get something squared. Um, so since there are... So you would just fit about with it. Since they're over the same denominator, we can just simply add the tops. So n plus n plus one. We tidy it up a wee bit. So we have n squared plus n plus tidy this up. Two n squared plus four n plus two over two. Divide your two into it. N squared plus two n plus one. That's your quadratic. Open up your brackets. N plus one times n plus one, which is the same as n plus one squared. That's it done. The sum of any two consecutive numbers will always be a square number. So we're looking good there. Now Two consecutive, again, use your previous answer. Two consecutive triangular numbers. That's what we did up here. Sum two, total two, equal. So n plus one squared, sum to, seems equals to, one, two, five, four, four. Find the smaller of these. Find n, you know, the bigger one is n plus one. So you've got a square. You want to get this n out in its own. How do you get rid of that square? You square root both sides. So you're left with n plus 1. The square root of 1, 2, 5, 4, 4. Get n and so on. Throw that all in. To your calculator, you get n to be 1, 1, 1. Flying through this. Now, part C. Some numbers are both triangular and square. For example, 36. This man here discovered the following formula for these numbers. For n, k, blah, blah, blah. Use Euler's formula, find n3. The third number is both triangular and square. All you've simply got to do there is, instead of saying n, k, you're replacing your k with your 3. So everywhere there's a k, arse in 3, sub in 3, throw it into the calculator, get an answer. So n3. 3 plus 2 root 2 to the power of 3 minus 3 minus 2 root 2 to the power of 3 all over 4 root 2 and that's all to be squared. The most difficult thing in this will be throwing it into the calculator. You know, so big brackets and the outside fraction and other brackets. Type it as you see it. We get 1225. If you like, you can work out these individually. That wouldn't bother me, Sal. If you had time, maybe you could work out that cubed. Again, just throw it in your calculator, write down that answer. Work out this cubed. Just got to be careful of that minus sign then uh, to change the sign of all the parts inside that bracket. So I nearly favor just throwing it all in at once and being careful with it. And your last bit there is proven by induction. The following so this is your 
series uh, proof by induction so what I always do in the series add on to the left sub in on right so there's like three different types of proof by induction you've got your divisibility um, your inequality and then this one so you have to know what to do in each of them so series piece to being added up to the previous term and when you're doing proof by induction think of your three things step show assume and prove so different steps so step one show that n is equal to one is true so easy to build up marks in this so one squared is equal to or send one over here one one plus one two plus one so over six one is equal to it's going to be equal to one as well uh, two times three six over six which is one which is true just to speed things up a wee bit step two assume so in your sap assume that n is equal to k is true that's what you always go back to always go back to the ass um, so just replace your n with k 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus k squared is equal to k k plus 1 2k plus 1 over 6 so always go back to the ass a box around that highlight that because this is what we're going to use in our proof part then and then step 3 Prove that the next term is true. So prove that n is equal to k plus 1 is true. And this is what I meant over here. We add on to the left because it's going to be the next term. And we sub in k plus 1 instead of k into the right. So 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. You can do your 4 squared if you like. Plus k squared. And now add it on. k plus 1 squared is the next term. And then straight in, sub in the right. K plus 1, instead of me K. K plus 1 plus 1, which is K plus 2. And just to speed things up. 2 times K plus 1 plus 1. 2K plus 2 plus 1, which is 2K plus 3. All over 6. Now... Got a tidy in. I'm just going to try and get the left hand side equal to the right hand side. And here we can see hidden away our assumption. So we know that this bit is equal to this. So instead of this here, you're going to sub in this bit here in the right. So k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 over 6. Don't forget your k plus 1, we're adding it on to the left. And it's equal to this here bit in the right. Now, you can either try and get them into brackets, all of them, or what I think is nearly the easiest is just multiply everything and get one side equal to the other, and then you've proven it. You're just trying to get the left hand side equal to the right hand side. So, work with the left hand side, get it all over the same common denominator, which is 6. So, k, k plus 1, 2k plus 1, plus 6 times k plus 1 squared over 6. And I'm just going to start multiplying these out k plus 1, maybe multiply the second bracket, second set of brackets, 2k squared plus 3k plus 4k is plus 7k plus 6. And just hope we don't make a wee mistake. One side will equal to another side. If we make a mistake, we'll figure it out then. So tidy this up as well. Um, just multiply in your k, doesn't matter what order you do, k squared plus k. Plus 6 times k plus 1 squared. Square the first, multiply the two together and double it. Square the last, all over 6. Maybe multiply in your k plus 1 now. So 2k cubed plus 7k squared plus 6k plus 2k squared plus 7k plus 6 over 6. Tidy her up a wee bit. 2k cubed plus k squared. 2k squared plus k plus 6k squared plus 12k plus 6 over 6. 
takes the thinking out of it rather than trying to factorize. 7k squared plus 2k squared is 9k squared. 6 and 7 is 13k. And then tidy that up again. Um, 13k plus 6 over 6. So both sides do work out. If you knew one side was up perfectly right, you could just nearly say it's equal to. No one's going to be looking through it too, too slowly, to be honest. So we've done it. And what I would just do a wee conclusion, just going through each of those. You know, so step four, your conclusion. We showed that n is equal to one is true. We assumed that n is equal to k is true. Proved n is equal to k plus 1 is true, therefore true for all values of n as an element of the natural numbers.